Thank you for Thank having you. us. Well, we had to have you because we've been getting uh, so many messages. People are excited by, well, as we know, smart glasses in general. But I've been hearing so many people saying, I want to hear about the Agiga Echo Visions. So we had to get you on. Um, is 2025 going to be the year that smart glasses actually fulfill the potential? Because as we know, we're so excited by smart glasses and the potential of the convenience, particularly with AI. Is 2025 going to be the year where smart glasses really come into their own? Oh, that's a great question. <laughs> um, like last year, I think 2024, there are some product got really popular. And I know some blind people were using that to help with their daily life. And I do see uh, the trend continues. And uh, we do see the opportunity to leverage this technology to better help the community. So for us, it's an exciting year because we will officially launch EchoVision. And uh, I do see people's lives will be changed by products like this. Wow, that's a bold statement. And uh, <laughs> let's talk. Let's talk about why you think they can be that impactful on on well on our lives. So the Echo Vision, the um, the smart glasses that you're working on. So just just tell us where we're at and what you expect them to be able to do. Yes. So um, we started uh, collecting feedback um, from our beta user group uh, last year, uh, around uh, full time 2024. And uh, we got a lot of feedback um, and requests too for both the hardware, lenses, software, and uh, what they ask uh, for the shipping and, and all those uh, additional add-ons too. Um, so right now, uh, we are very uh, heavily focused on both the manufacturer part of the hardware and also software, we are doing a lot of iterations to improve uh, the lower layers of the stack that's running on the glasses and also uh, what the user facing part uh, that our user will be experiencing uh, around, for example, scene description, OCR features, and uh, also um, uh, the remote assistance uh, integrations with our partners. Well, that's really important is the, the partnerships that you actually have. I mean, uh, when we think about smart glasses currently, I think the, the Meta Ray-Bans are incredibly popular. We also have things like the Envision glasses, obviously. But when Be My Eyes was made part of the uh, MetaView app and part of the Meta Ray Bands, of course, there's access to Ira through WhatsApp as well. They really did sort of lift into another level. So, uh, have you reached out to any of these companies, such as Be My Eyes or Ira? Yeah. We reach out to both of them and beyond. Um, many of them are giving positive responses to us. Uh, we are working with a few of them right now, and we are actually hearing a lot more requests uh, from our beta users and pre-orders regarding what they want to be integrated with the glasses. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm ready to dis disclose who we are working together with at the moment, but uh, we we do we do feel that a lot more can be added, and we are more than happy to discuss with uh, whoever is uh, ready to integrate with us. Well, we'll come back to the the software side and the, the features in a second. But let's let's concentrate on the glasses themselves. Let's concentrate on the hardware. Um, are these what do they look like? Are these your regular sunglasses, or is there you know a slightly more tech um, look to them? Uh, I'm going to start uh, trying to describe it, but Sharon, please feel free to add. Uh, we recently actually sent a newsletter with the latest uh, industrial design photo in that newsletter. Um, so the uh, glasses right now is uh, in one form factor for our initial launch. Uh, it's in black color. It looks as regular uh, stylish glasses, um, but we have some shades at the side and at the top. It's not the wraparound shape, but it's uh, some 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 shades that helps uh, prevent the light going in uh, as an attachment. 
uh, also we have some way to uh, uh, magnetically attach the lenses, uh, for example, sunglasses lenses, uh, to the to the regular glasses, uh, so it um, can help with um, uh, quickly um, transition to outside environment. Uh, with that, uh, our hardware actually comes with um, uh, a camera on one side of the glasses. We have uh, our uh, microphone and speaker, uh, which are designed to uh, help with the uh, scene description and um, wireless headset use cases that we design for the glasses. Perfect. Um, what about battery life? What can we expect with these? Right. Um, so uh, this is, again, one more feedback we've been hearing that um, uh, for some of our uh, beta users, they like some of the uh, smart glasses options out there in the world, but uh, the battery life is not long enough for daily use. Uh, our targeted daily use for regular case is four to six hours, um, but we have, um, for example, the uh, case for the glasses to work as the battery bank and also the battery bank, which is the case, can be connected to the glasses during the use, so it can help uh, make the um, life a little bit longer. Oh, that's fantastic. That's one of the problems I find with the Meta Ray-Bans. The case as a charger is great, and it lasts for ages and does many charges, but it's no good when your glasses are dead and you just want to use them right then. So yeah. how, does it, how does that work? Is there a USB connection in the glasses themselves? Right, so we have a USB-C connection from uh, the end of one arm of the glasses. So could you just connect a, a, a general power bank to them as well and run them off that? Yeah, um, since I think we already provide the case, it can already work as the power bank, but um, please feel free to yeah. use whatever power bank is out there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, as blind people, we're full of battery uh, chargers and, and power banks anyway. So yeah, that's really cool. And just going back to the lenses a minute. So can, can these have prescription lenses in them? Yeah, that's that's by design. Um, we want to support different use cases in the blind and low vision community. We've been hearing different prescription levels uh, from the low vision community side. Um, uh, there are some extreme cases. We are still working with our vendor to make sure that we can support those. But for the large majority of the prescription cases, we definitely can cover them. Uh, some extreme cases, uh, we have to hear what they are and then work with our vendor to uh, understand if that's possible. Fantastic. So I'm expecting quite a few, um, with, with the advances of you know, AI services such as ChatGPT, and particularly the, the live video options that a lot of these are coming out with now, um, I'm expecting to see so many more smart glasses you know, sort of flood onto the market. What is it you think that, that you can offer over the competition? Yeah, that's a very good and hard question. Um, <laughs> um, so. Uh, at the moment, we see our differentiator uh, from both sides, uh, but on a very high level as a short answer to start, I guess, is that we work with this community and try to optimize everything for this community. So what we say is that we build with and for the community. So um, some examples around the hardware would be the shades that I mentioned that we can attach to the glasses to help shade the lights. Um, the battery life, for example, uh, we heard feedback that um, uh, we want to be using it longer um, for video uh, remote help, for example. So we uh, yeah. designed in the sense that it can uh, be used with a power bank. Uh, for on the software side, um, OCR has been a top, top use case that this community needs, uh, reliable, um, word by word uh, reading of some text uh, is a high demand feature. Uh, it's not hard yes. to do, but uh, it's not necessarily done by everyone as the top uh, use case. We just want to uh, treat that as definitely the top use case and make it great. Um, scene description, uh, you mentioned there's some uh, advancement in the AI field that uh, more live type of video uh, description of of the scene 
is coming up. That's something we are trying to um, uh, experimenting and iterating too. Uh, there are some limitations at the moment, but hopefully later into the year, uh, we can actually get some of that going. Um, yeah, Perfect. and um, another but not last example, I guess, is to really um, look at the ecosystem of the apps in this community, what are loved by uh, people in this community, and we try to make our glasses uh, integrable or integrated already with those apps. Um, this is what you have been asking earlier too. Um, so we are trying to make sure that uh, those top apps, loved apps by the community is possible to be able to use the cameras on the glasses um, so that uh, people don't need to learn new apps. They don't need to learn new uh, user interface and uh, it just can come and uh, use it. Yeah, you're hitting all the uh, the sort of frustration I think people have had with every smart glasses so far. <laughs> I think you're you're hitting all those pain points there. Um, so this is this does require a smartphone, right? This this runs off the power of the smartphone and a companion app. This isn't a standalone device. Yeah, um, we don't have to have a phone um, if the glasses is set up already it can rely on a wi-fi network uh, in in the environment the phone and the companion app is mostly to set up the glasses so that it's ready to use some of the functionalities we do rely on the phone computing power so uh, without yeah. the phone's computing power the glasses may be at a limited functionality set uh, but um um, it, it is uh, usable uh, without a phone. Oh, that's very interesting. And what are you using for for the power behind it? What AI service are you using? Are you just using one, or are you you know able to select? Yeah, we have some of the um, um, models that we utilize in the backend. Um, we try to make it agnostic to our users. Uh, but to be transparent, uh, we use GPT, we use Gemini, we use the one that uh, answers the question uh, best for that specific context. Uh, so we have a little bit of smartness there to switch between the models. Um, we are looking at the possibility of allowing the users to actually select the model they like to have. Uh, but there is some uh, trickiness and also downside with that. Uh, this is something we are still evaluating. Um, that's from the back end. Um, there's also uh, some of the um, not so latest, but st still smart enough models that we ran on the glasses uh, that can help with certain use cases. Fantastic. And going over to you, Sharang, as, as the CEO of Agiga, what made you want to produce some smart glasses? How did you get into this? Oh, thank you. And thank Kwasun for doing all the answers. I got COVID, <laughs> so I, I, I'll let you do the heavy lifting work. Um, so uh, I started my career working in Amazon Lab 126, uh, which is a so-called secret lab, uh, the secret R&D center of Amazon doing Ooh. all the smart devices. Um, there are lots of cool products we have done there. Uh, lots of them stay in the lab as they're not mature enough to be shipped as a product. <gasps> like what? Uh, Give us an exclusive. What's the secret lab got in store? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, have, have you uh, watched the movie uh, Iron Man? Yeah, yes. Okay. Or the, uh, what's, this so, what's this called? Like the uh, holograph. Oh like yeah, the um... something showing in the air without a physical display, and you control it by hand. There, there's are you saying there's an Amazon hologram device out there? Not a uh, like holograph. It's like display in the air without a physical thing. Yes. that was one of my project. Wow. Okay. When can we see that? <laughs> uh, that's... <laughs> and is it accessible to the blind? <laughs> Sorry, I well, derailed you. You carry on. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 still challenging. Even that's a project uh, I worked on uh, when I first joined Amazon as a new grad, like fifteen years ago. Wow. With 
with current technology, I still feel, feel this is challenging. Uh, well, but another product which everyone uses is Alexa. I was in the early team of Alexa. I'm very happy to see it got uh, developed and loved by so many people. Yes. Uh, yeah, I, I like to help people. Uh, I think Alexa is a great product, uh, but I see that more people can be helped if we leverage the technology better. Uh, so when I see uh, the large language model or radio language model coming up, when I see the technology in the electronic world moving forward, I see, okay, we should do something more impactful. See who in the world needs more help with this technology. And we do see the blind and low vision people was not taking the full advantage of the latest technology. And that's why we're here to help. Amazing. Now, that's, that's interesting, actually. Are you, do you see this as an assistive technology or is this, are you targeting mainstream as well? So we do want to focus on the blind and low vision community. As we see, there are plenty of focus on the mainstream already. I, I don't think they need our help at all. I agree. I'm happy about that. <laughs> so, yeah, you mentioned the beta testing that's going on and pre-orders already. So what sort of price point are you looking at for the Echo Visions? Uh, so um, our full price is five ninety nine. dollars um, For pre-orders, we have a discount, uh, which makes the final price four forty nine. dollars And uh, if people pre-order, we're asking for a $99 deposit and that secures the 449 uh, final price wow and is there a monthly subscription along with that for pre-orders we uh, want to offer the lifetime free subscription um, uh, um, discount um, so there is no subscription for pre-orders um, for future orders after the pre-order period uh, we are still evaluating what the subscription would be, but there would be some cost uh, associated because we do have to pay some of the services and servers that we run. Yeah, absolutely understand that. Okay, so when can I get my hands on these? Um, we would invite you to come to our website for pre-order and we'd be happy to actually share some of our uh, devices once ready with Double Tap, you, Sean, and Stephen uh, to help us test, evaluate, and uh, promote the device. Perfect. Oh, yes, absolutely. We'd love that. But I know our listeners would love to get their hands on them as well. So they, these will be released in 2025? Yes, that's right. Uh, the pre-order has been uh, uh, running there. Uh, for a short while, and we expect to be uh, sending these first shipment around Q2 and this year. Okay, so for anyone who is interested, just give us that website address, please. Sure. Uh, echovision.agiga.ai. So echovision.agiga.ai. Okay, echovision.agiga.ai. Perfect. I'm going to go there. I'm so excited to see what happens with these. Um, I think smart glasses are just so potentially life-changing. So, uh, yeah, I can't wait. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you again, Sean. Thank you for having us.